Hi, this week we will perform an experiment on centripetal force and acceleration. The object can move on a circle at many different occasions. Even if the object's speed is constant, the velocity is changing because the direction of motion is changing and we know that the velocity vector is always a tangent to a trajectory. So for this particular object here that's moving on the circle that has a red radius r, even though its speed is constant, the velocity vector is changing. Here is in this direction, here points down, here points this way, then here points up. Now we know that velocity is a vector, and then even though this vector here and this vector here, here have the same magnitude, they are different because they have a different direction. This object is therefore being accelerated and the force must act on an object to produce this acceleration. This force that's acting on this object to produce this acceleration is called a centripetal force and it's directed towards the center of the circle. The object of this experiment is to study circular motion and to understand how various parameters affect centripetal force and uh, centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration of object moving in a circle of radius r with speed v is given by this equation ac is equal v squared divided by r. This acceleration is directed towards the center of the circle. Now from the Newton's second law of motion, we know that the force is equal mass times the acceleration. So then the magnitude of centripetal force is going to be given by this equation m times v squared divided by r. If the object also has a torque applied, then it will experience a tangential acceleration as well. This tangential acceleration results from a change in the tangential speed and is related to the angular acceleration by this equation, at is equal alpha times r. The centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration are perpendicular one to another and they yield a total acceleration a that's given by this equation, a is equal square root of ac squared plus at squared. Now I mentioned here torque. Torque is a tendency of object to rotate when you apply force to it. We will study the concept of torque a little bit later into the semester. Now let's talk a little bit about the examples of a centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. Here on the left hand side you have a person that's swinging a ball connected to a thread into the circles. So the only force here that keeps this ball running into the circle is a tension force in this direction which is equal to the mass of the ball velocity squared divided by r which is the radius of this circle. Now if this person releases the string then the ball will go straight from this point a here out of the circle. The another situation that can happen here is if this person is swinging this ball really really fast and then once it reaches a velocity that will produce a force that is higher than this tension force here, the cord will snap and the ball will move out of the circle. The another example of centripetal force and acceleration is a space station in orbit. So if you have a space station moving around the Earth, the force that will keep it moving in an orbit is a centripetal force produced by this centripetal acceleration. And that force here is a gravitational force between Earth and the space station. Now let's take a look at everyday examples. When you drive a car around a curve that's not banked, there is a force that will keep you on the road and that force is a centripetal force and this force is due to a static friction between the road and the tires. Now if you are about to drive a car around a curve that's banked, aside from the friction force that produces a centripetal, centripetal force that will keep you on the road, 
you will also have an additional component of the normal force. First, let's analyze a free body diagram. So you have a normal force as the reaction of the surface, then you have a gravitational force this direction down, and then you have a friction force between your tires and the road. Now let's decompose these forces and see which two forces are contributing in providing a centripetal force. First, from the geometry, we can see that this angle here is equal to the angle at which curve is banked, and that angle is same as this angle here. So now, to the center of the circle, what we have? We have a component of the friction force, which is F cosine theta, and then we have a this component of the normal force, which is N sine theta. So aside from the component of the friction force that keeps your car on the road, we also have a component of the normal force that contributes to keeping the car on the road. So in this experiment, the centripetal force will be provided by uh, attractive force F mag between the magnet inside this piece here and the magnetic material attached to a plastic block that is a accelerated mass. These two together are placed on the rotating platform. This line here on the accelerated mass is the line that will indicate the radius of your trajectory when everything is at equilibrium. When this accelerated block gains sufficient speed that the magnet can no longer hold in place, this mass M will break away from the magnet and it will move along the track until the strikes the stop at the end of the track. The equation that describes this motion is given by F mag is equal m times v squared divided by r. So as we said, the mass m is a block with the added mass is held in a place by a magnetic force while everything is at equilibrium. This plastic block with magnets is locked down in a way that this line here on accelerated mass will indicate the radius of the circular trajectory. This block is then given angular acceleration by applying the torque simply by releasing this rotating platform. When the product mv squared over r reaches a maximum centripetal force provided by the magnetic force, this block will break away from the magnet and move along the track until it hits this stop sign. This breakaway will produce a kink on the graph of speed versus time. The speed for which the breakaway occurs is labeled as Vc. During this experiment, you will change the radius of your circular trajectory, as well as the mass of the accelerated block, and then you will determine the value for Vc. Once you have the value for Vc, you will use this equation, f is equal m v squared divided by r, to calculate the centripetal acceleration. Lastly, you will compare your centripetal acceleration with the magnetic force between the magnet and this magnetic piece of material on the accelerated block. Now I will move on to show you a mechanics of this experiment as well as a data analysis. This is all for this week. Thank you.